It is 10 o'clock. I will call the June 28, 2024 meeting of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors to order. This morning we have Pastor Mike Ingo from the Draper Valley Pentecostal Holiness Church to provide the invocation. If you would please stand and remain standing for the pledge. Pass the plate. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father and Almighty God, we come in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ today, thanking you for this opportunity to be here. Lord, we pray for this board. We thank you for the work that they do and the responsibilities that they have. So now we just invoke your presence in this meeting, and we ask that all the decisions made here today would be under your guidance. And we give you the thanks and the praise. And Jesus, because of what you did for us on the cross, we're able to come in your name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, first item on our agenda, we have some introductions of new employees. Folks, folks, we're, we're, we're having a meeting, okay? Let's maintain the core. That's all I ask. Um, Mr. Hankins, Mr. Bear, I believe we have the introduction of some new contractors and some new county employees. <laughs> Yeah, it's like take an opportunity just to, to bring before the board. As you all know, we have new contractors starting for our trash and recycle offenders. Uh, RG Childress Trucking LLC. But Robbie and Brittany Childress are here, and I thought I'd just have them come and speak to you all briefly this morning. So. Good morning, board. Uh, we appreciate you guys entrusting us in this endeavor. Uh, if you guys have any issues or concerns or questions in the process, Please reach out. Please let us know. We want to do everything we can to make sure that this is as seamless as possible transition and a good working relationship going forward. We really do appreciate it. And they do live here in West County, so we can find our contact them quickly. Yep. yep. Well, congratulations on getting the contract. We look forward to working with you guys. Um, I know it's a great opportunity for a small business to contract that size. And uh, to piggyback on what Mr. Bear says, I, I hope you um, exude some Wythe County pride with what you do because that's probably one of the biggest complaints that we get. People just want to haul their trash off. Yeah. Um, but uh, if y'all need anything from the board, please reach out to us or, or Mr. Bear, or Mr. Hankins, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Mr. Hankins. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. We have had several uh, employment changes lately that uh, we've not had the chance to introduce the employees to you. Uh, the person I'd like to introduce to you this morning is our new director of the E911 uh, uh, Communication Center, uh, Allison uh, Justice, is our uh, new director. Uh, Allison has been with us for several years uh, as a dispatcher for several years now has done really good work for us. Uh, we've been through orientation with uh, the Virginia Department of Emergency Management on uh, peace out uh, direction and operations. And I'm excited to, to have her as our uh, director. And I uh, hope you'll welcome her. Do you want to say anything to the board? It's just like talking on the radio, Allison. <laughs> I've, I've heard I've got a good radio voice. So I hope it transmits well here. Um, I look forward to the change we'll be making and hopefully streamline our processes and keep the county safe. And all of our responders as well. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, some of our um, emergency services staff here. Uh, <coughs> I think they're out in the hallway. I can hear them. Is that the Barnell, 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 
That's fine. Thank you. All right. The next item on our agenda is citizens' time. Since we do have so many people signed up, I will read Rule 6.3 of our Rules of Procedure. There shall be an agenda item known as citizens time to allow with county citizens to address the board regarding any matter that is not an agenda item. Each citizen shall be allocated three minutes to address the board. No one shall be allowed to exceed the time limit specified in other sections of the rules of procedure. Any person not a citizen of with county may request through the county administrator to be placed on the regular agenda. Um, folks, with that being said, I've noticed a lot of you that have used Mount Rogers um, business addresses, so I will be calling on the people that have actually listed a Wythe County address. You're more than welcome to contact us through email. It's listed on the website. All of our telephone numbers are listed on the website. Um, and I will call Miss Debbie Little first because I believe she has an appointment to go to. Thank you. I appreciate that. Deborah Little, 595 North 4th Street, Whitfield, Virginia. Um, I really didn't come very prepared today. I was just made aware of this last night by a newspaper article. But I'd like to start by saying that I'm not here in any capacity that I currently serve. I'm here as a Whit County citizen and as a former employee of Mount Rogers. I had the privilege to work under the leadership of Ms. Bryant proud of my time, I'm proud of the things that we accomplished. And when working with Sandy, her leadership during the pandemic, I'm gonna start with there, it truly saved jobs. She didn't wait for somebody, she didn't wait for a guardian, uh, someone to tell her what to do. And I'm forever grateful for that because there were many people in other communities within our state that did lose their jobs. And I, I thank you for that, Sandy, because that was a very hard time in the beginning of the pandemic. But most importantly, because of her background and her medical background and her nursing background and her other, she took such swift action, and I can tell you, her swift action saved lives, saved lives of our most vulnerable people in our community. And there's no way to prove that, but I just know in comparison to other parts of the state, it, the numbers are there. Sandy's leadership at Mount Rogers, um, under Sandy's leadership, Mount <coughs> Rogers has grown tremendously, continues to grow, and we get to serve our individuals in our own community here in Southwest Virginia. We have services here in Southwest Virginia that some of the largest populations in our state don't have. Our, our individuals don't have to drive hours. They don't have to drive to Roanoke. They don't even have to drive to the next county. They're in all the counties, like Smith and Galax and Carroll and Wythe County, and I'm very proud of that. So people don't have to, because if they don't get the care they need, they're not going to be, they don't have to be able to drive to go and get it. And those are been brought into our communities, and for that I'm very proud of them. Don't worry, I'm not going to do my three minutes. I'm quick today. Um, and respectfully, Ms. Bob, <laughs> um, according to the quote in the newspaper, about cutting the funding as an act of a vote of no confidence, then write a resolution. Go to the agency board. Don't cut critical life-saving life funds from our people, your constituents. Write a resolution. I mean, if you feel that way, that's fine. But don't take away the money from the constituents that need it. Um, the other thing I got was regarding the supportive housing home, which I, I don't know the details, and I was really confused with that. It wasn't as if they didn't follow the law. They, voted, they followed your zoning ordinances. If you don't like them, change them. They, I mean, any, if the businesses and the agencies follow your laws and your, your zoning ordinances, that, that's up to you to change. Um, my biggest takeaway, and I say this with all respect to all of you here, is I was shocked at how little funding there is. I, I never saw those figures, I didn't know them. And to sum it up, I respectfully ask all of you, take a deep breath, both parties, get in the room, work it out. This is very embarrassing, and it's hurtful to the people in our community. And I thank you, I thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you, Ms. Little. Thank you. Folks, if we clap every time, we're gonna be here all day.
okay? Like I said, just maintain some decorum. The next person we have signed up is Miss Barbara Bartnick. Miss Bartnick. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for allowing me to address your board today. My name is Barbara Bartnick. I'm a retired psychiatric RN. I have served on Mount Rogers Community Service Board for the past nine years, appointed by the Wake County Board of Supervisors, possibly some of you. It has been a privilege for me to do so. The clients that are served by this agency hold a special place in my heart and I believe in some of yours. I know firsthand the difficulties faced by mental health clients and their loved ones. My father had his first psychotic break and hospitalization when I was six years old. That's when I was introduced to schizophrenia. Those were very challenging times, but thankfully treatments and services have come a long way since the 1950s. I feel strongly that the citizens of Wake County deserve the best possible treatment, support, and support when faced with a loved one's serious mental illness, developmental disability, or addiction. These medical conditions, even today, create fear, panic, embarrassment, and worry about how others will react if the word gets out, how and where I can get help for my loved one. It can be very isolating for families and loved ones. That is why it's so important to have the services that address problems across the lifespan of our community members. I am proud to serve on Mount Rogers CSB because of the array of services that are available to help families cope and thrive in spite of the challenges they may face. The improvements in services and new programs will be cited by Joanne Grossclose, our board chair, and show the progress made since I began serving on Mount Rogers CSB. Sandy and her leadership team have worked very hard to ensure Southwest Virginia residents have the services needed to address these challenges. Having been a family member in need of help and support, I greatly appreciate all their efforts. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time and consideration to continued support for the most vulnerable members of our community and their families. Thank you, Ms. Bartnick. Thank you. Next person we have signed up is, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll just well, I'll go ahead and call them up. Um, yes. Samantha Crockett. You want me to pass one around for you? Native and current citizen, I am proud to have spent the last 15 years at Mount Rogers Community Services, where I have witnessed numerous positive changes in the behavioral health field. Sandy Bryant has played a pivotal role in guiding Mount Rogers through these federal and state changes by fortifying and expanding programs and services across the community. Under Sandy's leadership, Mount Rogers became one of the only four out of the 40 CSPs in Virginia to achieve certification as a certified community behavioral health clinic, a prestigious federal model of care distinction. This certification has significantly bolstered the agency's ability to deliver comprehensive services and enhance support for staff through workforce development efforts. Throughout my time at Mount Rogers, I have consistently experienced the support. With Sandy's leadership, the organization actively fosters growth, especially in terms of professional development for its employees. When I joined Mount Rogers at 22 years old, I initially anticipated working there for a couple of years while pursuing my graduate studies and then moving out of the area. However, I ended up discovering my passion for the agency, our services, and our community, which only expanded after Sandy assumed the role of CEO. She recognized my potential and encouraged me to pursue it. Under Sandy's guidance, the agency promotes innovation and creativity among its staff. Recognizing that each community has unique needs, Mount Rogers values the input of its employees in shaping service delivery and program development. Through her mentorship, numerous staff members, including myself, 
have been acknowledged at federal and state conferences for their contributions to new service development and positive outcomes for our community. These achievements are made possible by the supportive culture within our agency, which is founded on fostering connections and a sense of belonging. My first encounter with Sandy occurred six years ago when she visited each program at every site to introduce herself, to praise the needs of each program, and provide everyone with information on how to stay connected with her. This high level of communication has been upheld over the years. One notable example is Sandy's monthly all staff meeting, open to all Mount Rogers employees. During these gatherings, Sandy consistently emphasizes her open door policy and encourages any employee to contact her via phone, email, or in person at her office anytime. It is evident that Sandy Bryant has had a profound impact on Mount Rogers Community Services and its staff. Her leadership has fostered a supportive culture, promoted professional development, and encouraged innovation among its employees. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Next person we have signed up is Ms. Cheryl Schilling. Ms. Schilling. well. Um, I've worked for Mount Rogers for the last seven years after I left the county public schools. Um, I'd like to address three concerns that were brought up in a previous meeting that you have. Um, first is the transparency in the workplace, um, the work environment, A, and salary for administrators. Transparency, as she already mentioned, Sandy Bryant opens, has a very open work policy. We get emails all the time about, hey, this meeting is available this day, please come and discuss, see what's going on. So I think that directly contributes to a toxic work environment. I think that people are experiencing a toxic work environment, I never have. They have the opportunity to directly address it not only with their supervisor, but their supervisor, supervisor, all the way up to Sandy. So that addresses that. The next thing is the pay difference which seems to be a big concern. To me, that is irrelevant. A, how does their pay compared to other community service boards, high administration? The bigger question for me is, are they doing their job? Is Sandy doing her job? I think the question could be, let's go ask the Department of Behavior, Health, and Developmental Services, the true supervisor of Mount Rogers Community Services. We have to report to. Sandy has to report to. So do they feel like she's doing her good job? Well, apparently so, because there is continual um, services being approved and directed this way, because that team is doing a great job implementing those programs and bringing the services for this community up to a, a higher standard. And the last question, I'm not even going to get the one minute warning. I'm so happy with that. <laughs> the last question that I think ought to be considered by everybody <laughs> is what is the priority of this board and this community? When a $2.9 million bond can be approved to upgrade the APEC Center for entertainment purposes, I think $165,000 a year. And I believe Wood County is not a freeloading county. We pay for what we get. We are hardworking people. You all have been hardworking people and continue to be hardworking people. So I would encourage you to put the money where our priorities are. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Michelle. You. The next person we have signed up is Miss Teresa Holston. chose Wood County and chose to stay here, chose to educate my children here, chose to have my career here, and continue to choose to work with the children of this community. I've read your article in the paper. I've seen the statements that say you're not dissatisfied with the services, but I kind of take it a little personally because I provide services 
and to say that I'm not worthy are the children that have PTSD, the children who have been abused and neglected in this county. And believe me, I know, I used to do Child Protective Services. You know that. You've worked cases with me yourself. I feel like to pull funding from those children who deserve to feel safe in this community, who deserve to be able to have a place to come in and share their feelings and learn how to regulate those feelings and emotions, it's not only going to benefit that child, it's going to benefit your school. You're going to see improved behaviors within the classroom. You're going to see different behaviors within the community. When you have an eight-year-old who looks at you and says, I feel so bad, nobody likes me, I want to kill myself, and to say that the money, your county doesn't think you're worth it, we can't pay money to continue your services, we can't offer you support, I'm very offended, I'm very saddened, I'm very hurt that we can't put forth the money, the efforts to continually provide the services to our children, to our adults, to our disabled community who work at the IDC. I implore you, I ask, please reconsider your, your decision. It's worth it. I'm worth it, you're worth it. And I'll tell you the 83 children I see twice a month, they're definitely worth it. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Folks, I, I'm not going to ask again. You, you can applaud when we get done with citizens time. Um, the next person we have signed up is, I believe it's Chestnut Pennington. And I apologize if I butcher anybody's name. Good morning. All right, Chestnut Pennington, I'm trying to let you drive. Very short and sweet. As a former employee of Mount Rogers, I'm deeply concerned about this decision. While working at Mount Rogers, I knew that I could call on Sandy at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., midnight for things that arose that I needed assistance handling. I don't feel like I was ever asked to perform any duties that she wouldn't or didn't perform herself. And as a voting resident of Wynn County, I am embarrassed that our Board of Supervisors is more concerned about the personalities within an agency than the amazing work that is being done to support this community. I strongly urge you to reconsider. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Next person we have signed up is Mr. Michael Duncan. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think we all can agree on the services that Mount Rogers provides. Not much. But I want to speak on something else. As an elected official, I'll tell her retreat. And every one of y'all, we have a different duty and responsibility. And that's for every citizen business agency that crosses that line into the community. And I'm concerned about the message that y'all could be sending to not just our citizens, but what about new businesses? Our current business owners. If we don't like you, we're not going to support you. That's insane. You know, we have boosters that come to our meetings every month, asking money for uniforms. And we're not going to provide uniforms because we don't like the coach. It's the same, because it eventually it affects who? The players, the parents. And I just, you know, we can say what we're doing. Look at the bigger picture. It's not just about the same right? It's about the agency and the people that we serve. The people that we serve that voted us in office. It's a shame. It's a shame that we have to it breaks my heart. For somebody who suffers from PTSD that sees images of bullets oh, and my daughter and I kiss her good night. I'd be ashamed of myself. And to say that you're not giving funding, 
as long as this lady is in her power, I'm sorry. That's extortion and blackmail. Shame on you. Thank you. Sheriff, I've asked as nice as I can. The next person that claps, escort them out. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Next person we have signed up is Mrs. Laura Helger. Ms. Helger. And I'm just here to speak on the fact of like the, the work environment and working with Sandy in the office. And I would just have to say that there's been some difficult situations since I've been there, working there. And um, Sandy either reached out to me by phone and said, you know, what do I need to do to help fix this? Or she came into my office and sat down with me and said, you know, what's happened? What's going on on both sides? And how can I address this? So, as far as being supported in the workplace, I felt 100% supported by Sandy, and um, I wanted to let you guys know that. Um, I can always reach out to her if I had any issues. Um, but with that being said, and with the knowledge of the leadership on both sides, for supervisors, leadership on our side, I just hope that today that a situation uh, can be reached, something amicable between both parties that can resolve this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Helder. Next person we have signed up is Ms. Deanna Mabe. Ms. Mabe? Oh.
their caseloads are very large and they're dealing with very traumatic and stressful situations every single day. I think that you all are voting today and I want you to vote whether you are voting for something or against something. It sounds like we're voting against one person and if she doesn't leave, we don't get our funds. Please vote for our services, for our people, for our employees, and for our citizens of this county and the services they provide. Thank you, Ms. May. Next person we have signed up is Mr. Robert Gordon. Supervisors, thank you for having us. I'm Robert Gordon. I'm with Phil residents since July of 2016, having grown up in Bland County. I'm the Chief HR Officer at Mount Rogers Community Services, having served the agency since December of 15, with over 20 years HR experience. In regard to agency turnover, specifically community service boards, behavioral health care jobs are not easy jobs. And our employees are to be admired. The following is offered for your and the public's consideration. Based upon numbers reported to and presented with the Virginia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services, the Q3 average turnover rate for Mount Rogers Community Services was 1% as compared to that of community service boards across the Commonwealth, whose average turnover rate was 3%. Similarly, the average turnover rate within Region 3 of the Commonwealth during the same period and for which Mount Rogers is a part was 4% as before mentioned, compared to our agency at 1%. I've heard say if you're happy with services, considering comparable percentages just stated, I also heard a wise man recently say something very similar to, i found in my experience that services valued and acclaimed can only be produced by employees that feel valued and supported. In regard to Ms. Bryant, the agency head the following is offered. 2023-24 does an excellent job in all aspects of the job. 2022 through 23, she has expanded services to individuals, developed good business plans to provide additional services to individuals. 2021 to 22, she is able to push through and make many uncomfortable decisions for the betterment of the agency, the individuals being served, and the employees. 2020 21, communicates well with staff and maintains an open door policy. 2019 20, very forward thinking, has improved communication with community agencies. 2018-19, brought agency in line with state required criteria. These are not my words, these are the words of the agency board of directors. These are now my words. Same day access, wasn't here before Ms. Bryant. Certified Community Behavioral Health Clinic, wasn't here before Ms. Bryant. The first crisis care and receiving centers in this state, wasn't here before Ms. Bryant. I'll leave you with this, since I see my one minute. In a recent testimonial from one of our direct support professionals working at Rural Retreats Mountain Retreat Group Home, she said, and I quote, I work with people who have limited sight, limited mobility, and the things I do for them are the things they look forward to. She ends her quote by saying, what keeps me at Mount Rogers is the family treatment from the bosses, HR, management, everyone. They care about the individuals we serve and the staff. Ask yourself, does the withholding funds hurt these citizens that need help? The very people the DSP described. The people we serve are some of the most courageous people you will ever meet. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Gordon. The next person we have signed up is Xavier Barnett. several times in other capacities in just a few short years ago, receiving recognitions from my transitions from Rural Retreat High School and the Governor's School to the University of Virginia. I'm here again today as I have, been, I have returned home to Rural Retreat to continue my journey and my career path with educational assistance and the career available to me through Mount Rogers. I'm privileged to work as a registered behavior technician, helping children navigate life's challenges and grow into confident individuals. Working with kids isn't just a job but it's my passion. These young minds are our future. And every day I witness their resilience and their potential. Whether it's teaching them their new skills or fostering their communication, I get to see firsthand the impact we have on shaping our future generation. 
As behavior technicians, my colleagues and I serve not only the children, but also our community. We play a vital role in building a supportive environment where every child and their family feels valued and understood. To do this, we have to have that positive work environment that you guys have mentioned so many times, which provides mutual respect, support, and a shared sense of purpose that drives us forward. These characteristics are fostered by our supervisors, co-workers, and our healthy and collaborative work environment. I don't doubt that there's not one time that I couldn't call any of my higher-ups and ask for help, and they wouldn't be there to listen. In all of the places I've worked trying to put myself through UVA, I have had the absolute best supervisors here at Mount Rogers. They are not only concerned with my job duties being completed, but my overall well-being and growth as a professional and a community, community member. Having an amazing group of supervisors who double as mentors have been so transformative for my career. They provide me with invaluable guidance and support, shaping me into being a better professional and just a better overall human. By con continuing to align our ideals and values between our management and our community needs, we create a culture of compassion, responsibility, and collective progress, enriching both our team and the community that we serve. We remain focused on extending the collaboration beyond our office walls and into the broader community. So let's continue to invest in our youth, because when we love what we do and we see those positive changes that we bring, we're not just shaping lives. We're building a brighter future for everyone that's involved through positive communication collaboration with our supervisors, team members, and community members. Thank you, Thank Thank you Xavier. <coughs> Next person we have signed up is Laura Davis. Southwest Virginia and I have lived in Wood County for about 23 years. I married a native of the county and we own a home, pay taxes, and vote in the Steedle District. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you today. I have worked in the human services field for 30 years with the last 19 years being at Mount Rogers. Mount Rogers has always been a place for innovation and hard work. However, what we have accomplished in the past six years is truly amazing. We've expanded services in all different areas, prevention efforts, geriatric services, and housing support. Our accomplishments in the past six years are because of the vision, drive, compassion, hard work, and leadership of Sandy Bryant. Since Sandy came to Mount Rogers, transparency and communication by executive leadership <coughs> to staff has increased significantly. Sandy has always practiced an open door policy, and staff have made use of it routinely. Prior to the pandemic, Sandy held town hall style meetings in person, during which Sandy staff could attend, ask questions, or provide comments. During and after the pandemic, we've been holding monthly virtual meetings, during which Sandy and leadership provide presentations about projects and plans and ask staff for feedback or their questions and concerns. I want to also share with you my personal story very briefly. I was diagnosed with two separate cancers in December of 2021. Sandy was the first person I told that I had breast cancer when I came back to the office after having an ultrasound up at the hospital, even before I broke the news from this ultrasound to my husband. She was also the first person outside of my family to learn that doctors had found a second tumor, which turned out to be pancreatic cancer. Sandy and many of the staff from all parts of the agency at Mount Rogers supported and cheered me through major surgery and recovery, nine months of chemo, and five weeks of daily radiation. From day one, Sandy told me I could do this. Sandy is not only a consummate leader, but also a compassionate, caring, and loyal person. And Mount Rogers is a supportive work environment from the top down. Lastly, I want to speak to you as a resident of Wood County very briefly. During the budget committee meeting last Tuesday, I listened to the committee talk about holding public hearings to discuss the county having a $41 million carryover this year. When you vote to withhold less than $200,000 in funding for behavioral health and developmental disability services for the people of Wood County, it sends a message that our health care, but also our jobs at Mount Rogers are not valued. Please don't use our health care and our jobs 
as a pawn because you've heard complaints from a few. If I could provide any additional information about our services or insights, please let me know. I sincerely and respectfully appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Thank you. Next person we have signed up is Amber Akers. Good morning. I would like to start by saying that I've worked for Mount Rogers for almost eight years, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my job and the individuals that I served. And a little story about Ms. Cindy Brown. When my mother died, she made it a point to send flowers to her family. I really, really hope that you guys consider funding Mount Rogers again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Akers. Next person we have is Brittany. Friend. Friend? Okay. <laughs> I was getting ready to say if it was if it was if it was uh, fruit or fraud. Or, oh. I was going to say what a perfect <laughs> career, but sorry. I'm so hi. My name is Brittany Friend, and I've lived in Wood County for the last seven years. I have worked at Mount Rogers since 2019. I was first hired as a quality assurance coordinator <coughs> for behavioral health services due to my background in therapeutic day treatment in rural retreat high school. In my time at Mount Rogers, I've been given multiple growth opportunities, and I'm now the director of quality assurance. I can truly say this has been the most positive, rewarding, and safe environment I have ever worked in. When anyone asks me about my time here, I always tell them I have been so blessed to work for an organization that cares about not only the people they serve, but also the staff. I've had the opportunity to see the amazing work this organization does and how upper management and mid-level management work to support staff. The agency has held numerous town hall type meetings and updates from leadership meetings, pioneered by Sandy, where Sandy and administrative staff to include IT, human resources, reimbursement, and quality assurance are present. Staff can ask questions to any department they choose. We have also sent out annual consumer satisfaction surveys for the administrative departments. Staff can submit responses about their satisfaction, leave com comments anonymously, and have their comments addressed in the town hall meetings. Mount Rogers has also hosted an annual get-together at a local venue for staff, where we can socialize with one another. Throughout my time at Mount Rogers, I have been recognized with an Employee Excellence Award by Sandy during the monthly updates from leadership meeting. I have been given caring and thoughtful notes when I gave birth to my second daughter, when I moved into a new home, when I became a licensed professional counselor, and when I was working with external auditors on behalf of the agency. I have always felt supported in my work, felt comfortable talking with staff around the agency, and known that the people here want what is best for me and my family. I was also allowed and encouraged to provide outpatient services and work at the Youth Residential Crisis Stabilization Unit so that I could finish my direct care hours in order to become a licensed professional counselor. The agency also provided me with the Mount Rogers staff to supervise my licensure hours. During my time in outpatient and in working at the residential crisis stay unit, I continued to see how staff support one another and work together. They helped one another cook meals, write daily notes, provide therapeutic interventions, answer ethical questions, and provide regulatory guidance, just to name a few. I truly hope that we can continue to partner and work with the Board of Supervisors. We all want the same thing, same thing. <coughs> this county and its people the best they can be, thriving, healthy, and happy. In my opinion, it would be very disheartening if the Board takes a stand against our Executive Director and our agency as a whole, and I hope you will reconsider your decision. Thank you, ma'am. Next person we have is Tammy Cornett. Is, is it Cornett? Brittany done her why she she went down I couldn't I couldn't read it Matthew 25, 35, 40 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. 
I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me, truly. I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. This is what we do on a daily basis. I need you to understand that the funding that you're trying to pull, not only are, it's not just funding, it's help. It's help for these individuals that we have to sit and feed. It's help for these individuals that we have to bathe and clothe on a daily basis. It's help for these individuals to have someone to sit and be compassionate and to hold their hand when they can't even some speak back to the community in heart. But sitting there and just holding them as a nurse, they know that the empathy that we have for them and the love that we show and the care that we show for them is what makes their day. Lord, I ask you, the Bible teaches us in 1 Peter 14 that each of us should use whatever gift that God has given us to serve others as faithful stewards of grace in various forms. The epitome of that is his wife. She's using her gifts to give back to these people in this community, a community that I live in and that I live in. Please reconsider. Reconsider. And I thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The next person we have signed up is Miss Joe Vires. I'm Joe Vires and I've served on the Mount Rogers Board of Directors since last September. I live in Whitfield and retired from Mount Rogers in 2015 after almost 30 years. At that time, I was second in line to the current CEO and was in charge of the organization during her absences. So I know and understand the complexities of overseeing one of Virginia's largest behavioral health care systems. During the past six years, Sandy Bright, the current CEO, has successfully expanded services and developed additional specialty services that years ago we dreamed of. She provides, with the, Mount Rogers now provides 24 7 geriatric services, crisis services for children, and assertive community treatment. And that's just to name a few of the additional services. Additionally, she successfully obtained numerous grants um, that really has been helpful in. Uh, allowing the, the agency to help individuals with serious mental illness find and secure affordable and safe housing. These specialty services are not available throughout Virginia. As a matter of fact, they're only available in four areas of Virginia. Wood County is one of those areas. I hope that you will take that into consideration as, again, I too ask you to reconsider your decision about pulling the funding for these services. Um, during the last 10 months, I have been here working with Ms. Bryant, program supervisors and direct care st employees. Everyone takes pride in their work and their work environments. Board members are encouraged to visit program sites and to interact with all employees there. These programs promote teamwork, best practices, and promote employee growth and development. I respectfully ask you to continue funding these vital services to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Spurs. Next person we have signed up to speak is Douglas Hall, Jr. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Doug Asaw. I've recently started volunteering this year as a football, basketball, and currently one of World War Tree Trace baseball coaches. <coughs> I have enjoyed working and teaching kids. I've chosen to come forward today with great concern. I 
and Monday 6:24 are at our scheduled playoff game. After winning our game 13-6, the opposing team's head coach stormed out of his dugout in a blind rage and cussed and got in the face of an 18-year-old umpire because of what he called was a terrible call. That ended the game. After cussing this up, he aggressively started shaking our kids' hands. And Coach James Barry then grabbed my hand and started cussing me close to my face. And as I did not retaliate, I had my hands up and called for Ump to come help to get him off of me. He then grabbed the collar of my shirt, stretching it so badly I could not repair it. I still did, I still did not retaliate. All I said was, we was all World Retreat, what are you doing? Looking back on this, we now know these actions could be nothing less than premeditated actions. As he told his kids not to leave the dugout, as he was walking on the field to shake our kids' hands and attack me. This is why he would not let his team come out and shake our hand and wait until he, he finished shaking our kids' hand and assaulting me. Mr. Bear later that night apologized for his behavior and admitted his wrongdoing and it all being his fault to the head of the, the local rec league. The umpire also apologized and admitted Bear was at fault on the field for me. They called about parents who were yelling from Coach Bear's side and telling us to come on that side to get assaulted. No one went. We were exited to have, we were excited to have the, made it to the championship. I'd like for it to be known we just lost to this team two weeks prior. This altercation did not happen then. We were humbled and acted like great <coughs> championship as it was the only loss we took that season. The kids, practiced, the kids practiced very hard and approved and came out victorious this next time. I have not had an excellent record with the wins and losses in every sports I've had, but I've had an outstanding record of amazing sportsmanship in each game we've had. One of our players and I, Royal Tree Youth League, can attend to this. The same cannot be said about Mr. Bear, as this is a common occurrence. He has been physically, verbally assaulted in front, in front of kids that I help coach along with a crowd of people. At the end of the day, it's only about the kids, and I would, I would never jeopardize their success or safety or hurt anybody in the stands. I work to de-escalate my career and my personal life. It is not, it is not responsible for the park and rec to stand and suspend both of us for one game. I done nothing wrong. My hands were up as he was in my face pushing me back. This is my son's last year of youth league, and now I cannot attend his championship game for simply doing what I was supposed to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Next person we have signed up is Stephen. Is it Woolwine?
continue this funding for Mount Rogers as a Mount Rogers employee. I'm not asking you to continue this funding for Mount Rogers as a citizen of this county. I'm asking for you all to continue this funding for Mount Rogers as someone whose life has been directly impacted and who has friends and family still here, still in this area, who are able to work and live because of what Mount Rogers has done. Thank you, sir. Next person we have signed up, and she's lucky that I know her scribble, Miss Michelle DeBoer. It was a scribble. I'm not here. <laughs> Good morning. I am Michelle Boyle. I retired from the Virginia Department of <coughs> Corrections as a clinical as a clinical social worker several years several years and I continue to work for the Smith County uh, District Court at Southwestern <coughs> Health as an independent evaluator and I work part time as a therapist at Heatherwood Counseling Center. I am passionate about good mental health. I'm honored to serve the citizens of Whip County as one of the appointed board members to the Mount Rogers Community Services Board. Recently, you, the Board of Supervisors, expressed concern about communication and staffing at Mount Rogers. You questioned the work environment, job satisfaction, transparency, and compensation. I attended Tuesday's uh, budget meeting, and I believe it was you, Mr. Smith, that suggested a staff survey or analysis to be completed either by Virginia Tech or uh, Radford University or other third party uh, agency. Was it you? No, it was me. Thank you. <coughs> credit. Okay. A staffing survey would analyze performance, employee satisfaction, and compensation. It would give direction for improvement, change, and reinforce staff for what they are doing well. The 857 employees at Mount Rogers Community Services Board are hard-working professionals, and the data from this study will confirm and reinforce their efforts. This data, the data gleaned, will increase recognition and satisfaction. This is a complex undertaking, and it would not occur overnight. I discussed the feasibility of a staff, uh, staff survey with my fellow board members, uh, Joe Byers and Barbara Bartnick, and Chair Joey Grosclose through emails. I had a lengthy discussion with Ms. Barbara Bryan, Executive Director. All agree that in order to answer your questions, assess needs, and evaluate the needs of staff at Mount Rogers, a staffing survey will be done. Ms. Bryan is, com is committed to initiating the survey and seeing it through to the end. Allowing a third party to analyze staff, uh, staff uh, answers your need for transparency. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I've got it written down here, but it's actually this far. Thank you for your idea, and thank you for the Board of Supervisors for the privilege of allowing me to serve on the Mount Rogers Board. I hope that we can see this project initiated and completed. Let's work together to address everyone's needs and concerns. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Board. Next person we have signed up is Rita Viers. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and members of the council. My name is Rita Byers. I'm a Wood County resident and executive assistant at Mount Rogers Community Services. I began working at the agency in 2003 and have uh, 21 years of experience in the agency. As I began my career at the agency, I was amazed at the number of services provided by the agency and the impact of those services on the lives of Wood County and including all the other localities served by the agency. Under the leadership of Ms. Sandy Bryant and the executive team, decisions have been made to empower individuals' lives and provide the needed support to each individual and their family. Ms. Bryant has shown strong leadership with a compassionate heart for the population served. Over the years since Ms. Bryan has been the CEO, I have seen her stop a meeting to speak with individuals to address their needs, their concerns, and give the necessary time to solve their problems. 
even to the point that she would uh, stop the meeting and then go and just try to comfort them and show them her uh, personal care for them. She takes time to visit with the individuals when they come by the administration office uh, to show their uh, talents that they do by singing uh, holiday music. Uh, also by um, the thing that she does to show them that she cares about them individually as a person. <coughs> we are all made better people when we accept the willingness to help others, those with challenges in life. We all can say, but by the grace of God, there go I. As a citizen of Wood County and as a concerned staff, I would like to encourage you, the Board of Supervisors, to reconsider your decision to financially support the agency with your local funding. As a testament to the services Mount Rogers offers to individuals with mental health, substance use disorders, and developmental disabilities, Ms. Bryant has always put the individual first in providing the necessary services to enrich their lives with the challenges they may face daily. I can vouch that Ms. Bryant has a very compassionate and understanding heart for the individual served. Since I've been a part of the leadership team, I have seen Ms. Bryant put in hours of time to meet with community stakeholders, law enforcement, legislators, health organizations, and other organizations to uh, communicate her passion for individuals with challenging situations. Ms. Bryant has always had an open door policy for employees to address their concerns. For some time, she has held uh, uh, updates to leadership meetings to give staff an opportunity to ask questions and to share concerns relative to their work environment and to hear the ideas to improve relations. Ms. Bryant's consistency with a task stays at the forefront until it is completed. She has the Ms. Byers, I'll ask you to wrap it up, please. You're out of time. Thank you. She has the highest work standards and I am proud to work under her leadership. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Fires. Next person we have signed up is Ms. Kayla Fisher. Thank you, Ms. Fisher. Board, we do have one person that is not a Wythe County resident that has signed up, but um, I think it would be appropriate to allow her to speak. Ms. Joanne Grossclose, who is a Smith County Board appointee, and I believe that um, she currently serves as their chair, so unless I hear any disagreement, I will allow her her three minutes. All right, Ms. Thank Grossclose. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Chairman Vault and members of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors, <coughs> I thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. I am Joanne Grossclose, Chairperson of Mount Rogers Community Services Board. I'm a retired educator and a lifelong resident of Southwest Virginia, having lived my entire life in Bland, Wythe, and Smith counties. I appreciate your dedication to public service and the time and energy you spend on the Wythe County Board of Supervisors. Also want to thank you for the excellent board members you have appointed to our board. Barbara Bartney, Joe Byers, and Michelle DeBoer all have exceptional backgrounds in mental health, 
attend board meetings regularly, and offer insightful comments and advice. You could not have better representation on our board. I will say the decision by your board to remove all funding from Mount Rogers Community Services came as a shock to me. The problem seems to be what you have perceived as a lack of communication and transparency from our CEO, Sandy Bryant. While there is always room for improvement on the Mount Rogers side, I want to share with you how our board members perceive Ms. Bryant. We see her as someone with a wealth of experience in mental health, as someone with a great compassion for clients we serve, as someone with high expectations for her employees, and as someone who has put together a great leadership team to carry out the mission of Mount Rogers Community Services. During her six years directing Mount Rogers Community Services, which employs 853 people, the Mount Rogers staff, with your support, has been able to bring over $48 million of competitive grants to Southwest Virginia. We often complain that Southwest Virginia gets overlooked when it comes to funding by the state and federal government. This shows an amazing effort under her leadership to secure funding for programs to meet the needs of our citizens in the Mount Rogers region. Ms. Bryant and Mount Rogers Community Services are well respected across the state. We have been a leader in establishing the first crisis receiving area and geriatric <coughs> transition center in the state, and we are the pilot project for permanent supportive housing. We need your support. <coughs> As of June 17, 2024, we've already served 2,010 with county individuals this year and have reached thousands more with wellness and prevention services. Working together, we can tackle the problems of homelessness, substance use disorder, and mental health. We can enrich the lives of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Your financial support sends a message of care and compassion and a willingness to work together to make our community stronger. Thank you for your time. I urge you to restore the funding to Mount Rogers Community Services. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Gross Close. All right, that's all the With County Citizens I have signed up, so I'll close Citizens' Time. All right, next item on our agenda is the payment of invoices. Mr. Walt, I'm sorry, I don't want to speak out of turn, but can I ask two quick questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, first, am I correct to see that um, funding Mount Rogers is not actually on the agenda? I didn't miss it anywhere, right? Okay. No, so that brings me to my second question. Um, I plan to make a motion during my supervisor time, unless you will allow me to do it now, while so everyone doesn't have to sit through the entire meeting, or I can wait. I don't. I don't have an issue. I recognize you. You have the floor. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <coughs> I'll read this. This is a serious concern for our community, and I think we as representative representatives of the county need to make sure our citizens are taken care of and this board needs to make a final decision on the funding therefore I would like to make a motion to fund Mount Rogers CSB $134,349 right I have a motion on the floor by Miss Lawson do I have a second do I have a second going once going twice Motion dies for lack of a second. Anything else, Ms. Lawson? No, thank you for the time. All right, we'll move on to the payment of invoices. Each board member has received in their board package a copy of the board or payment invoices that need to be paid. With that being said, I'll entertain a motion to approve the invoices. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Burnett. Is there any questions or any invoice that any board member wants to pull out? All right, here now we'll do a roll call vote with Mr. Burnett. Aye. 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 So approved. <coughs> Next item on our agenda is the minutes of our previous meeting from June 11, 2024. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. <coughs> so moved. Have a motion by Mr. Burnett. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Smith. Is there any corrections or additions to the minutes as presented? 
Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Next item on our agenda is old business. We have some appointments, Mr. Bear. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, for our social services board, uh, I have uh, been in touch with uh, one individual as a potential um, replacement. She has requested additional time to speak to Mr. Hammond, uh, who is the outgoing person. Uh, before she would commit, so uh, unless there's any other recommendations from the board, I would recommend that we just uh, keep hold that off until business. the next meeting. Does anybody have a problem with this leaving it under old business? All right. And the other one is Miss Harless, and I don't know if anyone's had I, a chance. I will reach out to her. I apologize. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't. <coughs> Miss Oh, Harless you have talked to. Okay. okay. Um, I will say, Miss Harless. Um, does a super job on the DSS board. Um, I serve along beside her, so I'll entertain a motion to reappoint Miss Harless to the DSS board. So, have a motion by Mr. Smith. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Terry. Is there any questions about that appointment? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right, next item is the rights, Route 619 right-of-way abandonment request. Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, we did not receive any uh, requests for any uh, <coughs> hearings on this, so staff would recommend that you all approve this resolution uh, that we send on to VDOT to abandon a portion of 619. All right. Entertain a motion to approve resolution 2024-20. So have a motion by was that? From Mr. Burnett. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Morgan. Is there any questions or concerns on that motion? All right. Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Anything else under old business, Mr. Barry? I do not have anything, Mr. Chairman. All right, we'll move on to reports. We have a treasurer's report, and I do not see Miss Gwynn, and with it being the end of the fiscal year, I assume she will not be here. Um, we have the commissioner. I don't see Mr. Linkus. He's probably in the same shape. Uh, next, we have a sheriff. Sheriff Foster, you have anything for your report? Um, We'll move on to new business, and before we go, I'll skip the agenda a little bit. Mr. Hankins, I believe that uh, a couple of our new fire and EMS employees just walked in. And hey, Mr. Chairman, we'll, we'll introduce everybody at once. Make them come up. Make them come up again. <laughs> <laughs> we hired so many people. I can't remember who's been up here with me. Please don't bring Chuck up. <laughs> we see him. I, I, I seen <laughs> Chuck. I seen Chuck sit back there. That's I didn't mention him. So uh, just uh, so you're aware, uh, our uh, two deputy uh, managers for uh, emergency services, uh, Greg Frazier is our deputy chief for. Uh, EMS, so we'll oversee the uh, uh, rescue squad uh, operations. Uh, Deputy Chief uh, Randy Zook um, is over emergency management, uh, so he'll handle emergency response. He'll be doing a lot of the same duties that Chuck has been doing uh, for the last year, coordinating with uh, BDM. Uh, Mr. Zook has considerable experience in search and rescue and uh, fire department operations uh, on the rural creek side and has uh, been a longtime member of Christian Aid Ministries. And so uh, the skills that he's acquired there uh, should be a, a lot of help to us. And then uh, Captain Lynn, uh, Lindsay Jackson, you all probably already know, a uh, longtime captain of the um, Lead Mines Rescue Squad, uh, came over to us as captain uh, for the uh, eastern end of the county uh, for uh, our day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations uh, there in that station. So I'll let them say anything they'd like to say or let you ask any questions you'd like. Randy, we need about five minutes. All right. <laughs> Don't pull that phone out. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would just like to say, uh, 
Good morning, and Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I'm, as uh, Matt said, I'm Randy Zook, and I'm the new uh, Deputy Director of Emergency Management. I would like to take this time to say thank you for the opportunity to serve the citizens of the county and look forward to the challenges that we as a department may and undoubtedly will face. I would also like to say thank you to the board for the support that you have given in the past and continue to <coughs> the emergency departments to make sure that they have what they need to provide to those in need. If you have any questions Excuse or concerns, me. please do not hesitate to contact your office. Thank you, Randy, thank you. sir. And Lindsay, before you get started, I, I will give you a couple more minutes to be nervous. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've probably known Randy since he was, uh, don't, don't age me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you've had your moment. Um, but Randy has been very heavily involved in um, all types of emergency services, search and rescue, um, especially on, on my end of the county. And, and I, when we announced it on, on social media, um, somebody made a comment, and, and I, I'll just throw this out here, and I don't want to uh, make Randy or myself tear up, but um, Randy lost his father, who was also very involved in the fire department and, and um, the community of Rue Retreat um, um, due to cancer, and he would be so proud of you. I mean, uh, just congratulations and welcome aboard. Now follow up that. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Well, my name is Lindsay Jackson. Um, like you said, I'm the captain. Uh, I usually serve most of the east side. Um, I started out my career when I was very young. I started at 16 before I was actually able to go get my EMP. So I started out as a junior member on the squad for Lake Montrose Squad. Um, and then I went to go get my EMT basic, and then later on went and got my paramedic. So I've been doing EMS for years. It's the only thing I know how to do. So um, I served for captain for a little while for lead mines, and then now for the east side, and I am very proud to be doing that. And I just want to say thank you guys very much for putting this together. It was really hard work, and I really do appreciate it. Um, I think we're going to be very successful. We have very good paramedics and EMT serving the community right now. So, yeah, so thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. It's not the only thing you know how to do. Have you all heard her sing? Yes. Yeah, yeah well, I'm getting ready to say, yeah. I, I'm no, getting ready to say to she, she's, she's got another talent. Um, I've also known Lindsay for a while, and unfortunately, as she was coming up through lead mines, it seemed like um, every time I had the pleasure of working with her with my day job it was some horrible yeah. horrible accident or horrible scene and she was even at a very young age she was very she was a consummate professional and a very hard volunteer yeah. job <laughs> so welcome congratulations um, <coughs> on behalf of the board and, and I think um, um, we've proven that um, Anything you guys need that we can provide to provide better services for our citizens or make your job easier, don't hesitate to reach out to Matt or any of us. Don't don't ask for nothing, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> we recently we recently took delivery of our nearest ambulance. Um, that will be assigned to the rural treat side of the county. Um, it's here. Um, as Wade said, thank you. We'd like to see the quality, the quality product that you guys have provided for us. Um, it's way nicer than any of us expected. I think so. Thank you guys for that. And it is. I I had the opportunity to see it today. They delivered, it and we spent some time in the back of it because it was the first time it come a storm come in uh, Withfield in a month and a half. Um, so. Me and Lindsay and Matt and Chuck, we all hurled up the back. Got plenty of room. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. if I might, I, I would just like to, to, to comment. Uh, uh, you know, I appreciate Mr. Hankins' leadership, as you all do, in setting this up. And I appreciate Mr. Parnell as, as, as we've gone through this. But to this team that's assembled, I expect it 
the transition on April 1st to have a lot more hiccups. And, and they, they, you know, but it has been well received in the community. It has been very good leadership from them here. You know, there's behind the scene problems and things they're addressing. They're addressing and they're taking care of them. I appreciate the professionalism they're presenting, and I just, I probably don't tell you all enough, but I do thank you for what you do, even you, Mr. Parnell. <laughs> I think the, the professionalism and the quality of care that they're providing our, our citizens is, yes. is top notch. And, and I, I'm like Mr. Bear, I, I expect to pick up some phone calls and emails. I got the first one. No. So, thank you. Yeah, thank and, you. And my only other comment what what is today, Mr. Chairman? Uh, is it the 28th? What, what, that's Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's Donut Day, isn't it? I believe <laughs> <laughs> You only have one board meeting on a Friday in the entire year, and I thought, you know. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I brought in donuts for staff last Friday. Mr. Ra uh, Randy, Mr. Don <laughs> Randy, let me tell you something. During dispatcher week, and, and I don't remember, I got, I pre-ordered them because I got a several dozen <coughs> and for me to drive down Wesley Highway and smell those things <laughs> and not eat one was just horrible. But he's got red lights. Well, <laughs> myself and Mr. Smith are, are kind of having this weight loss contest. <coughs> Jamie, Jamie would like to. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, guys and lady. Yep. Thank, yes, you thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> all right. I've had a, a request that we recess for five minutes. We'll be in recess. All right. I will call us back to order, back on the record. I believe we left off with new business. Yes, sir. All right. We have the consent calendar. Each board member has received a copy of the consent calendar. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Second. Second. Have a motion by Ms. Lawson, a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any questions or discussion about our consent calendar? All right. Here and then we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 So approved. Next item is a recommendation for us to take action to <coughs> approve the budget appropriations for the first quarter of 2025. Entertain a motion to approve the first quarter appropriations as presented. So moved. Have a motion by Ms. Lawson. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Smith. Is there any questions or discussion on that motion? Here and then we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett. Aye. 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 So approved. Next we have our fiscal year 2025 budget amendments. Mr. Baird, do you want to touch on those? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ralph, we just approved the budget, but I do have a couple of amendments that I'd like to recommend. Um, the first item is uh, school-related uh, for school safety and security to amend and appropriate the $131,849.31. These are some funds that the school just received notification that they would be receiving and are supposed to receive those today. Uh, so just request going ahead and amending those into next year's budget. The next two items, as you all recall, we had set up a line in the budget for the um, last couple of years, Commonwealth Attorney's Asset Forfeiture and the Sheriff's Asset Forfeitures, where we just <coughs> amend and appropriate in the budget the amount of money that they are setting on those funds. That way they can use those if they deem necessary for any project. would request the amendment and appropriation of those two items, which are the balances with interest uh, they, have, they have earned at this time. All right. Do you want to do all three of these together or do them separately? I'm fine with all three together if you all would like. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Does the board want to do them all three together? That's fine. All right. I have a motion by Mr. Cook um, to approve the fall, the FY 2025 budget amendments as presented. Do I have a second? Second. 
have a second by Mr. Morgan. Was that you, or yes, Mr. Sir. Terry? Yes, sir. Uh, is there any questions or discussion? I will say I will abstain. Of course, obviously, uh, it deals with the, the sheriff and, and two other things. But part of my job is I, I handle the asset forfeiture for the sheriff's office and the Commonwealth Attorney. So I will abstain. Um, with that being said, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett. Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, I'll abstain. Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, uh. So approved. Next, we have the abstract votes for the <clears throat> Republican primary that was held on June 18th, 2024. I believe we normally vote to accept that yes, abstract. Um, I will entertain a motion to accept the abstract of votes as provide it so I have a motion by mr smith do i have a second second have a second by mr burnett any questions about that motion hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed so <coughs> next item or we have anything else in the new business mr barry mr hankins just the staff reports oh sorry Moving on to staff reports, <laughs> Assistant County Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I apologize that I do not have a, uh, a written report uh, this month, um, but I, I would like to thank you for your expressions of sympathy for my family and the loss of my grandmother. Uh, I was off Wednesday uh, for the funeral, and I, I appreciate the, the support uh, as well as the uh, very nice uh, flower arrangement that, uh, that was provided. Um, Two things for very quick consideration. Uh, one is a request for a uh, minor change in title. Uh, this is very trivial, but uh, it does matter when I'm at uh, conferences and meeting with uh, staff from other local governments. There is a distinction between deputy county administrator and assistant county administrator. If you go to Northern Virginia, Fairfax, some of the larger counties there, that they may have dozens of assistant county administrators. The deputy county administrator is the person that's designated to act in the absence of the county administrator. So um, I would request an authorization that we slightly modify my title and I will not request a change in pay as a result. I will entertain a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a motion, Mr. Smith? Yeah, second. Uh, second by Mr. Terry. Is there any discussion <laughs> on that? In, in, in all jokes aside, uh, Mr. Hankins, I. I think I speak for everybody up here um, when I say we certainly appreciate everything you do, even though we give you a hard time. You have um, taken a few pounds off of Mr. Bear's back um, since you've been employed here, and you have taken some projects, and sometimes I wonder how you get everything done. Uh, this will sound like bragging, it's not. Uh, I had at the Virginia Local Government Managers Association, um, I, I had uh, a county administrator introduce me to one I did not know as this is Matt Hankins, he does the impossible. Um, <laughs> not exactly true, but uh, I, I accepted the compliment. Um, one thing that we have worked on uh, in my time here, Mr. Chairman, is the uh, Regional Improvement Commission, and I just have received notification from uh, Hickok and Fern. Um, the uh, current balance for the Regional Improvement Commission is $7.26 million. Uh, those are the uh, proceeds from the uh, gaming tax at the Bristol Casino on a uh, per share basis. That's a little over a half million dollars for each one of the uh, 14 participating localities, and that represents uh, three quarters of operation. So we, we have one more check to receive before we know. But it appears that we are on track for hitting our revenue target for uh, the uh, fiscal year 25. And those uh, checks should be distributed in late August or early September. All right. I think we have a motion and a second on the floor. Yes, Ninety-nine point nine percent of the time you'd had to do that, but I was, I was on my game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Ah. 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 So approved. Congratulations, Deputy County Administrator Hankins. Is that it? That, that concludes my very brief report. Okay. Next, we have Master County Administrator. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just two quick items for you. Uh, number one, um, county the, the Code of Virginia does require that counties accept when easements or property of exchanges of lands are conveyed to them. Um, we have a piece of property or some easements that we are obtaining um, that has requested a copy of a resolution certifying that. So I would just request the approval of resolution 2421, uh, authorizing the county administrator to accept conveyances of property to with county. All right. <clears throat> Entertain a motion to adopt 2024-21. So I have a motion by <coughs> Mr. Smith. Do I have a second? <coughs> second. I have a second by Mr. Morgan. Is there any questions or concerns about that motion? All right, here now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 So approved. And I will just comment on that. Mr. Hankins just laid a deed on my desk this morning that we have received our property from, uh, I guess, easement of the property from AEP uh, for the kayak portage. Uh, facility and so that is out to bid and uh, so we hope to get started on that project very soon just as a, as a question that I already know the answer to I assume you will not be uh, purchasing property like several other groups that we fund without notifying us first that is correct uh, I would request your all's permission for any easement that we receive like for water lines, sewer lines, all those, that the authorization be the county administrator, go ahead and accept those. For us to acquire other property, things like that, I would request, I would bring those to you all for acceptance. You all have to give you money to buy property, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem, Mr. Farthing. We, we give money to other groups that buy property that True. we don't know whether we're buying or buying. Hey, don't take the excitement away of my kayak. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me have my moment. <laughs> um, I, I know how it should work in the real world, world Mr. Farley. I'm just, yeah. based your experience may, may vary. Yeah. Uh, the other item I've got is, uh, did not receive this for the uh, in time for the committee meeting the other day, but we did get a victim witness grant award. I uh, believe it is an increase of funding, so I do request that you all approve this uh, $96,457 grant award. Right. Entertain a motion to approve the, uh, is it victim witness? Victim witness, yes. The victim witness grant. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? S second. Have a second <coughs> by Ms. Lawson. Is there any questions or discussion on that motion? And just to clarify, that has now moved under the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. It's no longer under the Sheriff's Office. Yes, sir. All right. That being said, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 <coughs> so approved. Anything else, Mr. Bear? No, sir. All right, we'll move on to County Attorney, Mr. Farley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's two items on the agenda for me. Uh, one is the JCR Solar, which was the solar project in the Fort Chiswell area. The, they had filed an appeal from the Planning Commission's decision to the board. There was some discussion of when we would hear from the developers. They wanted to come and speak to you all, and they keep moving that date a little bit. <laughs> So they had requested that be the end of August, August 27th meeting, um, when they can have their people here uh, to make a pitch or presentation to you as you reconsider um, their appeal or listen to or review the appeal for the JCR poll, JCR solar request. So after speaking with the county administrator, um, our recommendation to the board is that we just hear that on August 27th. If that's okay with you all. Does anybody have a problem with August 27th? And, and I, I believe that I've, I've mentioned this before, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'll mention it again. I certainly want to hear them, but I, I think we need to set a time limit. Um, I don't, me personally, I don't need an hour and a half presentation by a bunch of attorneys. 
I don't know what everybody else's feelings are. We can communicate that to Mr. Kuvak and, and just say, you know, we're going to give you 10 minutes on the agenda or 15 minutes, you know, in that range and try to limit it to that. I mean, I think he'd be fine with that. Okay. I just, yeah. We will, it, with, with you all concurrence here on it, we'll just send a, have Scott just send a memo back to them or a letter back to them just stating that we'll put it on the August 27th agenda. That's all we need. Part of it. And we should have in the packet, I think, the what they presented <coughs> to the Planning Commission, I think, is the plan from Stephen or Matt to put I that. Think that. Yeah, it's already been shared with you all yeah. previously, and we'll, we'll have that in there. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The second item is um, <coughs> there has been another settlement in relation to the opioid cases. Uh, this is with Kroger, and um, the recommendation from our council in the opioid cases is to opt in to the Kroger settlement. Um, and there's some settlement agreements that need executed on or before August 12th. So the request, uh, our recommendation, really I'm relying on Mr. Barton, who is our outside counsel on these cases. Um, but um, speaking with Mr. Baer, our recommendation is we follow our outside counsel's recommendation and opt in to this settlement as well so that we can participate in any funds that are distributed uh, through that settlement. And I would request a motion to um, accept the proposed Kroger settlement and authorize uh, Mr. Baer and myself to execute any documents uh, to opt into that settlement. All right, entertain a motion to accept the settlement and authorize Mr. Baer to execute. Can I ask a question? Let, let, let us get on the floor first. Okay. Uh, Entertain a motion to approve the settlement and authorize Mr. Bear to... And or Mr. Farthing. We're not sure who signed up on that DocuSign. Mr. Bear and Mr. Farthing execute the documents. Ooh. Have a motion by Mr. Cook. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Ms. Lawson. <coughs> now, Mr. Morgan. <coughs> okay. Got a head of you. I'm sorry. Uh, I saw a report that the overall opioid... opioid opioid settlement has been rejected Is so that I forget anything the, to do with this no that's a different company that's, so that was Purdue Pharma it's Purdue Pharma yeah. Yeah. and what had happened is they had filed the bankruptcy case and inside the technicalities of the bankruptcy case they tried to do a grand settlement through the bankruptcy case and get approval of paying everybody out and protecting the principles behind the pharmacy which was the family and the Supreme Court said, no, the bankruptcy court can't do that. Because uh, not everybody that would be affected by that settlement is in it, right? And at least that's what I understood from the newspaper article I read. So that is a different drug company um, that they were trying to get a settlement with. Um, so that is separate from the Kroger settlement. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. We'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Uh, Aye. 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 So approved. Anything else, Mr. Farley? No, sir. Thank you. Um, I, I was going to wait the supervisor's time, but I'll use some of your time, Mr. Farley, before we move on. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Farley, and, and I'm trying to word this correctly. Recently, we've had a... Um, several uh, state mandated issues that require uh, Mr. Farthing to get involved and, and get um, court orders um, signed by the judge um, in a fairly quick fashion because of their time sensitive matters, matters and I just want to say thank you for thank you for your assistance on that yeah all right, we'll move on to board reports. We have the Water and Wastewater Committee. Yes, sir, Chairman. The uh, board, I mean, the Water Committee met on June 18, 2024, and made the following recommendation approving an enterprise zone rate adjustment of 4.1% based on the consumer price index. Proposed rates are as follows. Um, do I have to read the whole thing? I think you just reference the chart. It's reference the yeah, chart I think. at the bottom. <clears throat> All right, coming from <coughs> committee, it doesn't require a second. Is there any <coughs> questions or discussion on that recommendation? Mr. Byrd, does this include progress for Yes, sir, it does. Thank you, sir. Is there any more questions? All right, hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Aye. So approved. Second item is advertising a public hearing to consider a 10% increase to sewer rates. Again, coming from committee, does it need a second? Any questions or discussion on that recommendation? Mr. Chairman, I will just point out on page 161 of your package um, shows the current residential and commercial wastewater rates uh, and the effect uh, that a 10% increase would have on that. So a residential um, increase on the first 3,000 gallons would go up $2.20. Uh, commercial would go up $5.50. Uh, this would be the first increase in wastewater rates uh, since 2004. Right. Does that lead to any questions or discussion? <coughs> Eric, none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. And we will set that for the July 23rd meeting. We don't have time to advertise for the July 9th meeting, so the July 23rd meeting. Anything else from the water and wastewater? Committee? No, that was it. Thank you, John. All right. Move on to the budget committee, Mr. Smith. Budget committee met on June 25, 2024, and took the following actions: uh, appro approving three Department of Criminal Justice Service grants, authorizing the county administrator to sign and accept these grants, and to amend and appropriate the funds to FY 25 budget as follows: law enforcement equipment for amount of 71,000 SRO grant for the amount of $77,030, public safety programs for the amount of $66,666. All right, come from committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any questions or discussion on that recommendation? All right, hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 Abstain? Aye. 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 So approved. Declaring a VHF, VHF radio surprise and authorizing staff to dispose of them. Is there any questions or discussion on that recommendation? Um, Mr. Farthing, the Sheriff's Office didn't pay for any of those radios and not getting any of that money, so I don't, I don't think there's a conflict, is there? No, there's not. Okay. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. Approving the engineer agreement with Thompson and Litton for the Hitachi Energy Arena parking lot development project. Again, coming from committee, it doesn't require a second. Is there any questions or discussion on that recommendation? All right, hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? No. Aye. 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 So approved. Declaring the old bleachers at the Hitachi Energy Arena as surplus <coughs> and offering disposing of them, disposing of as staff sees fit, with the exception of making the first offer to the Southwest Virginia Horsemen's Association um, before selling for scrap. Is there any questions or discussion on that recommendation? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. Transferring $816,818.55 from account 700-260630, Board of Supervisor ARPA funds 2021, to account 100-101000, general fund. All right. Again, coming from committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any questions, on, or <clears throat> questions or discussion on that recommendation? All right. We'll do a roll call vote. <clears throat> Mr. <clears throat> Terry? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Aye. So approved. Transferring 900000 from unspent energy service funds to 9000-470200 uh, capital projects for equipment repairs and replacements as the fire departments and rescue squad buildings. Just for clarification, that was emergency services funds, right? All right. All right. Any questions or discussion on that recommendation? Do a roll call vote, Mr. Burnett. Aye. 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 So approved. Transferring the following as presented, machinery and tools tax and uh, retreat pool. <coughs> 
Again, coming from the committee, it doesn't need a second. Any questions or discussion on that recommendation? All right, we'll do a roll call vote, <coughs> Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Amending and appropriating the following as presented. $1,615 uh, for the circuit court, $40 for medical examiner, $849,981 school operations, $229,007 for school cafeteria. Again, coming from committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any questions <laughs> or discussion on that one? All right, here now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 Uh, so approved. Authorizing the county administrator to transfer funds if needed between department organizations for FY24 closeout. Any questions on that recommendation? All right, hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 So approved. Set in a public hearing for July 23rd, 2024 at 6 p.m. to consider carryovers for the FY25 budget, including school board carryovers. Any questions on that recommendation? I'm just confirming everyone did receive my email that had the copy of the carryovers. If you have any questions on any of those, do not hesitate to, to give us a call. Right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. Amending $16,000 to the FY25 circuit court budget to provide funding to Montgomery County for Judge Showalter to have access to, access to services for their full-time law clerk. Any questions on that recommendation? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 So approved. Authorizing staff to proceed with a bi-weekly <coughs> pay period effective as soon as staff can implement the policy and software changes. Again, is there any questions or discussion on that recommendation? All right, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. Nothing else, Mr. Chairman. All right, we'll move on to Board of Supervisors time. Mr. Burnett, we'll start with you. I don't have nothing at this time. All right, Ms. Lawson. I have nothing else, but thank you for allowing me the time earlier. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Cook. Well, I, got, <clears throat> I got a couple of things. Um, first, I want to thank Mr. Hankins and Mr. Bear for everything that you've done out at Ager. I went out there and looked, and it's, it's, it's coming around real nice. They were out there putting the moss down the other day when I was out there, and it's a, it's a top-notch playground for the kids in Wythe County. Yeah, thank you, Donna. A great job. Thank you, Mr. Cook, and we will schedule a, a ribbon-cutting uh, event to celebrate uh, that once everything is wrapped up and ready to go. Yeah. Great place. But I ain't getting them in little kids. <laughs> well, no, you don't need to. <coughs> I don't want them broke. <coughs> and uh, the other thing, I wasn't at the budget committee meeting, so I don't know what, I, what went on. And I didn't second because I didn't know what went on. I'd like to get a kind of a brief of why we're not why we're not going to give the Mount Rogers any money. Um, you know, I mean, what's what went on at the budget committee to make that a, a non-topic? I guess they can address that in their, their time, unless you want to meet your time up. Well, I, I'll use my time. I mean, as, as the budget committee has no um, motion to do anything to proceed, there's nothing come out. Um, both Mr. Vault and Mr. Terry made their points. I requested information from, or Sandy spoke. I'll let her know what the comments that I've been getting uh, about the finances since then. I have received uh, people reaching out to me with other issues regarding the work environment, how employees are being treated. Not only did they call out Ms. Bryant, but they called out other members of the, the leadership team. Uh, in particular, uh, Ms. Belcher spoke about where the money were going, was going, uh, and that's a big concern, you know. For with County, a lot of people's been asking, especially the people that lives around some of these real estate properties that they're buying, 
they want to know if, if their, their funds is doing that or the grant money that we learned today that they were getting to the tune of $48 million, I think was the number. Um, so she was supposed to send us a breakdown of with county's money where it goes. Um, I haven't received it unless it's in some of this information that we got here. I mean, you know, my I continue to get calls from employees and ex-employees. Um, I, I do I do appreciate the people that spoke um, today. I will tell you that I was told that every one of the employees that were present today were told they did not have to clock out to come to the meeting. Um, I have concerns about that. Um, I received a copy of a document um, that they sent out to their board members. Um, and I'll read, I'll read part of it. Um, said that uh, they had talked to the agency's lawyer who strongly suggested that Sandy attend the meeting but not speak. And he suggested that the Mount Rogers board should speak at the meeting regarding Sandy and the agency's performance and that it is Mount Rogers board responsibility to ensure that Sandy and the agency are creating a positive functioning work environment, not the responsibility of the board of supervisors. Now the issue I have with that is, number one, I feel like I have a fiscal responsibility to the taxpayers of West County, but more importantly, I feel like I have a moral obligation um, to speak for the ones that didn't come. Um, when I receive comments like, she doesn't treat her employees with respect and has run off a lot of good employees. She has brought a lot of toxicity. She doesn't like to listen. She prefers to yell and belittle. I left the agency because they are rude and just ungrateful. I worked there six years and I was treated with such disrespect. I'm not shocked. Not a place people want to work. I told them in an exit interview it was a shame to work there because they really lost sight of what really matters. <clears throat> so, you know, you're going to have upset employees, and, and I've said it, I'll say it again, we need the services. I appreciate especially the lady that spoke that was the RN. She was very passionate. I guarantee you she is an excellent employee. Most of them that spoke, a lot of them I know, are excellent employees. But there's some concerns there. Yes, sir. And they have yet to even acknowledge that there's any problem there. You know, their turnover rate last week or this week, they had two employees submit their resignation with 20 plus years experience. They're hemorrhaging employees. That, that's where I'm at, Mr. Cook. Uh, and, and I understand that, but where I'm at is what, you know, what, are, what are we doing to our mental people that need mental health? I mean, are we, are we, all the <laughs> screwing them by not funding them? Is there, is well, there, according is, is to, there uh, some way we can get our point across without punishing According to According to the, the news article that came out last night, Mr. Nestor, who handles, I guess, their PIO, said there'll be no change in services in the okay. You know how much they have in reserves. And, you know, to, to their lawyer's point that it, it shouldn't be our responsibility, get on their website, look at their, under their board members. Miss Byers that spoke, she's not even listed. How long has she been on the board? 
three years, I believe she said. I believe. I don't know. Yes, we appointed her late last year. Still oh, shows. Okay. Still shows we have a vacant position. But to a bigger point, there's not a single piece of contact information listed for their board members. No email addresses. No phone number. So how do you contact them if you have concerns? Does anybody else have a problem with that? I do. We all of ourselves public. So, and I and I won't take any more of your time, but that's where I'm at, sir. Well, I, and you know, and, and I understand all those issues. My my question is, was and is, you know. I don't want to hurt the people that need the service. That's that. That's my whole, you know, when they're talking, when they got up here and start talking about, you know, the, the, the patients paying for this, uh, that's what I, I don't want to happen. I don't want the patients to have to pay for her or anybody else on that board that's screwed up because, I mean, working through churches, working through the schools, we all know there's a whole bunch of people that need those services. I mean... It, it is a valuable service. Well, and, and you know, I, I can, I, I know I can look at the numbers. We can all look at the numbers and know, you know, what they have in reserves. I can only, you know, read, read this from this article. Um, if you'll give me... Um, it says, regardless of the board's decision regarding funding, nothing will change in terms of the services with County receives, said Logan Nestor, Director of Marketing and Communications for the Community Services Board. We are committed to serving the citizens of Wythe County. That's it. <clears throat> Mr. Terry, I'm sorry. Did you no, 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 it's all good. Mr. Cook, I've got multiple excerpts here that I'll, I'll be glad to give you a copy of. Kind of follows up the same thing that uh, that Mr. Smith and Mr. Vaughn have said. I received several texts. The most recent one said, "Thank you for taking a stand for the people who couldn't have a voice today," and that and that's where I'm at. I've got other documentation. To be glad to share with you. I've done a FOIA request. Woman flat line. Just I'm not funding that. There's major accountability issues there. Logan Nestor, he said, I read the same article that Chairman Vault read. Services will not drop. They will not change. They'll continue to provide those services. I'm like, y'all don't hurt people that need the services, but something has to change. I mean, it's, it's, it's toxic. One of the lines in here, I've noticed a huge change in morale and culture change since Ms. Bryant took over Mount Rogers. I probably got 25 to 35 calls, if not more, from employees thanking us for taking the stand that feel this exact same way, that echo these exact same sentiments as what's in here. And it's it's time to affect change. I mean, that, that's where I'm at. But I agree, we don't. I don't think none of us sitting up here want our services. Not a single one of us. And well, we're all clear about the services that. won't change. Then I'm okay. And, and I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. And, and I can't speak for everybody's. I haven't requested or received any complaints about the services. But now, I know that they keep telling their employees that we're saying that we have problems with services. If anybody has problems with the services they provide, raise your hand. If anybody has received calls about the services they provide, raise your hand because I have them. So... They are trying to change the narrative when, from my seat, I have maintained the straight line of the issue that I have, or issues that I have, and it has nothing to do with the services. I'm just concerned about the kids. And oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. Kids I think we issues, and I, I just want to make sure what we're doing doesn't hurt them. I mean, that, well, according to their concern. own employee, it's not. It's not. And, and I don't think that there's a person up here that if it was, that wouldn't address that. I hope they address the issues that we brought up and we can move forward and restore funding. But it looks like they 
just want to change, try to change the narrative and put <coughs> on something besides the issues that we brought up, which is actually a disservice to their clients. That's all I have. <coughs> all right. We need to open up a dialogue with the their board. The, I have spoken to Mr. Board. I have never spoken to any of them other board members. And the one from Wythe County, I can see her house from my back porch. Miss Barton has <coughs> never reached out to me. I don't know her phone number. I don't know how to, her email. Byers? Huh? No. 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 No, I've spoken with Miss yeah. Byers. Um, and that, that's one thing I was going to ask as well. I know since Mr. Borey brought it up. And, and, and I agree with Mr. Cook, I don't want to, to take away from the youth or anybody that's in need, and I don't think nobody up here does. Um, but for them to address the issues, I don't know what legal right we have to, to meet with them, to have that communication, that dialogue between this board and that board to make sure that they're addressing concerns that's brought to our attention. I have absolutely no issue uh, meeting with their board members. Um, I don't think they get paid. Yeah, no. um, I, I do have an issue with inviting employees to stay on the clock yeah, to, no, to I, go to a meeting. Yeah. I think if we do this, if we meet with them, it'll just be, you know, it doesn't have to be all of us or it could be all of us, however we want to do it. If it's, if, a couple that want to do it and meet with them. Um, so like a subcommittee or something, I'm fine with that, whatever. But I think for us to, to resolve the issues for with County and to continue the services, which I know what Mr. Nestor said in his article, but to ensure that you know our people are getting what they need, I think we need to so, somewhat work with that board to make sure things is getting addressed in a timely manner. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to be talking about this a year from now. We need to get this taken care of pretty quick. Yes, sir. Agreed. Things like getting their one of them board one of their board members to come to our meetings. Yeah. Just tell us what's going on. Give us an update. I really liked um, the part. I know um, Mr. Board, she mentioned the uh, evaluation or the survey for staffing. I like that, but you can say that, but how long is it going to take? I know it'll take quite a bit of time because I didn't realize that they had, you know, almost 900 employees. That's a, that's a big group. But uh, we need to make, you know, give them what we've heard, the complaints that we've heard, sit down, talk to them, hey, this is what we've heard, and it's been numerous times over just not one account, uh, and just help them drive the, the corrections that needs to be driven. Um, and, and I'll yield to Mr. Moore. Yeah, I just think we need to meet with them, just to at least get a dialogue going and try to get this resolved. And I don't know, I mean, I don't know if y'all want to do it to the full board, if you want to in invite them to the budget committee and let us talk to their board. Um, about the concerns we do have, the concerns we are hearing, start that dialogue there and then invite them to a full board member or full board meeting. I mean, I don't know what, what the board's pleasure is. I just think we need to do something. You know, I mean, like you said, we can't sit around here and wait forever. I'm good either way. I'm good either way. The budget or the whole board, it don't matter to me. Might be what would be, you know, if they have day jobs or whatever, it might be easier for them to come to the evenings to the full board. I don't know that. I don't know that any of them have a full-time day job. I, I may be wrong. So. But at, you know. At the very least, they need to start putting some contact information out there. So, because then maybe employees would have contacted them, Instead they could have addressed the issues, and it would have never got to this point. 
which I'm absolutely fine with. Well, staff can arrange it any way you want to. If you want to, you know, um, obviously any of our uh, any of our committee meetings or board meetings are you know, full public meetings. If it's a couple of you that go and sit with their board, or uh, if if it's a couple of you all meeting with the three the three members from um, uh, the, the, you know, with county representatives and the, the chairman of their board, however you all went, just just let us know and. Uh, we can work on, on trying to get something scheduled. Well, probably ought to do just the whole board. You know, that because each one of us got to take a vote if we're going to vote. So we all might as well hear what they got to say and what they're going to do about it. I think it would speed the process up. Yeah. And if, Mr. Ford, I'll, I'll ask, ask you is there, if we have a joint meeting with our board, can we go into closed session and discuss personnel with them? I would have to research that. I mean, I know we can go into closed session. We can invite anybody into closed session we want to talk about stuff. But I think the personnel has to be air personnel, not Mount Rogers personnel. So if you're going in, it's got to be. But if they county. have a board meeting and they go into closed session and discuss personnel, they can invite us as a board, correct? I would assume so, yes, but I don't know. I mean, and their attorney may have a different opinion. I mean, there is an attorney general opinion that says, you know, you go in personnel, it, it limits that. Um, you know, but it says don't, it's not a precedent or whatever, but, you know, it's, it really limits our ability to go in closed session on personnel issues. But uh, it's not really precedent for us to follow, um, but it's an interesting opinion uh, on personnel. So I think it would just be their call and then their board's decision, you know, if they go, my opinion today is that we can go into closed session anytime we want to about whatever's allowed under the code. And if we need to invite a consultant in or we invite um, a board member from another organization to come into our closed session and talk about stuff, I think we can do that. So I would assume Mount Rogers would be following the same code section. Their attorney may have a different interpretation, but I would think they can, but I don't know. I mean, for sure. because the thing is, I don't want to lambast that woman in public. Right. I don't have a problem doing it. I've done it before. Right. But there's a time and place. Right. And, and I have some very specific examples that... The, the logistics of it would be confusing to me. I'd have to think through that because if you're having a full board meeting and they're having a full board meeting, right, both are public meetings, they're separate bodies, like it's a joint meeting with the town, right? So like you do with the towns and stuff. So then you would have your board going into closed session potentially and their board going into closed session. I'm not exactly sure how that'd work, you know, but I can try to think through that and figure that out. You know, uh, potentially if that's something they're willing to do, then you know, I could have a conversation with their attorney if they have one. I think they do, Mr. Durbin was here today. I think that's who that is um, from Sands Anderson, uh, who's representing them. I assume that's why he was here, but um, I think that conversation could happen between the attorneys to see what's possible logistically and, and what would, do they agree to to do something like that. You know, but, um, I'd rather go down that road prior to the meeting to know logistically how should that work, you know, so we know what we're prepared for. Well, so. if you just look into it, what it's like. Okay, and I sure. Guess we'll move forward to there. Anything else, Mr. Pitt? No, sir. All right, Mr. Smith. No, sir. Mr. Morgan. I have nothing. Thank you. Mr. Terry. Just, just happy 4th of July next week. And that's all I've got, sir. All right. Um, I just got a couple of things um, back to the business of the board. Um, I've had a request for children at play sign, Mr. Bear. Um, I know unless something's changed, I think the county's responsible for that. Uh, they do make a good argument. Retreat Lake Road from the Cedar Springs Road to, and maybe one coming the other way past the S curves. Um, the, there's a lot of families that live there with small children and and small pets, um, and some of the homes live or some of the homes are not set very far back from the road. Um, They've out. They, <clears throat> excuse me. They've also requested a speed study through VDOT, Mr. Bear. If you'll follow up with, with Mr. Schwartz, 
Um, it is unmarked, so legally it's 55 miles an hour. You have um, farm tractors, you have citizens, you have people pulling big campers, um, and all these people live on the straight stretch park from Cedar Springs. That definitely is an area that needs to be looked at, and you know, I know VDOT has their formula, but um, I would assume that 25 or 35 miles an hour would be more than enough. Um, I will say that I did travel out there the other week, and I went through there at 55, and you better have a sports car when you go through the MS curves. Um, there's no way you're doing it. And, you know, the campers are, are driving slow because they don't know where they're going. They're looking for the entrance to the campground, the lake. They, they have a valid concern. So if you'll, if you'll get with Mr. Schwartz on that, um, I'd appreciate it. Do you ever recall that being posted? I'm, I'm trying to think, and, and it surprises me that it's, it's not been through there. But. I don't, I mean, you're... You're a lot older than I am, and I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had I had to recover a lot from Mr. Zook's comment. You know, <laughs> I I don't. At, I, at one time, I thought it was posted thirty five. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'll look into it. But that, I, I some reason I want to think the same thing. But uh, I, that's what the, I was thinking. But. The the children at play signs. Uh, what we the I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, the state changed on that. <coughs> um, you can petition for them to put up, but then the citizens are responsible for paying the cost of it. At that time, it was like $800 per sign. I'm assuming it's probably $1,500 per sign right now. Um, I don't know if there's a certain citizen who I want to talk to or if the board wants me to get those prices and see if the board... Uh, wants to, to put up those signs, but we do receive those quite often from, from citizens, and historically we have gotten the information from VDOT and provided it to those citizens. If they wanted to proceed, they could work through the county, but they would be responsible for those for those payments. So I'll, uh, I'll get the information and then share it with you. All right. Does anybody else have anything? Mr. Baird? Uh, no, sir. Mr. Rankings. Just would mention a couple things, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. Um, Mr. Hall came and spoke during your citizens' time. Um, I'm aware of that issue. Um, Mr. Bayer uh, has uh, recused himself from, from any uh, activity regarding that, that complaint, uh, but I am working with uh, staff and the league uh, to uh, request more information about the way they investigated uh, that, that particular altercation. So, uh, and, and, one, and one issue that uh, you also... I'd ask that you look at the rec commission is not meeting on a regular basis. They haven't met in several, several months. Mr. Williams needs to come up with a meeting schedule and present it to this board because nine months between meetings is unacceptable. Wow. Mr. Cook and Ms. Lawson both brought up that issue uh, in the last couple of months, and we have uh, sat down with Mr. Williams, and we've uh, worked out a schedule. Uh, we're having a little issue with the July, but uh, we do have a regular schedule. We're going to meet the first Monday of each quarter, with the exception of this July meeting, and we're, we're trying to change that schedule around just a little bit. Second second Monday. Has that, second Monday, sorry. Yeah. Uh, has that been commended or communicated out to the members of the Red Commission? They should be getting a letter early next week okay. uh, uh, with the uh, the proposed meeting schedule and uh, notification of, of this first uh, meeting. Yeah. Uh, first meeting is, they, 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 and I know that he's been out, Mr. Williams did send an email out, I did get a copy of it, and they requested the first meeting on July 10th. 10th. Uh, so that, that, Wednesday. that should have gone out to, to everyone if they, if they have got the correct email addresses. Can I add something about the Red real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Also, <clears throat> On, when, when we play high school ball, we have three officials. And we, when we play rec ball with the little kids, he's got three officials out there, which is a total waste to have those officials. I ask him about it, and his answer is, why not? Well, why not? Because we pay for it. Okay? And that needs to stop. You know, two officials for little kids is more than enough. I've seen it done with one. 
and we're paying three to be out there doing it. That's ridiculous. All right. Anything else, Mr. Hankins? Just uh, would uh, remind you that the uh, new ambulance is parked outside for your review uh, as you're ready to leave. And um, you, you may get some, some complaints about EMS service. Um, that there are some addresses that um, we get very frequent calls from that don't wind up in transports that aren't actually legitimately uh, EMS calls. Um, so we're trying to do what we can to um, resolve those and temper those. Um, it's just a handful of a uh, handful of addresses in the rural treat area and uh, lead mines. Uh, un under the previous way we we operated, those folks uh, either expected special treatment because they had been a member of that squad or they were related to someone on the squad. Uh, we don't work that way, uh, and we don't come to cook your dinner or fetch your shoes or move you from from the bed to the to the couch. Um, you know, there are just some things that are not medical calls, and when they call for that service, it means that we're putting other folks in, in danger of not getting a timely response uh, by doing those. So I would ask if you get any of those calls, please refer them to me, and we'll uh, try to Absolutely. respond to them. <laughs> All right. Ms. Collins, do, do you or your um, help have anything? <laughs> well, today's today was yeah. a good day. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Farther, do you have anything else? All right, with nothing else to come before the board, we'll be adjourned.